All right, as I keep on with my refined paint layer, it's good to review those different steps that I've been using. So underneath the refined paint was a shape painting layer. Underneath that, I built that shape painting layer on a sketch layer. And it be, can be kind of interesting to see what your refined paint looks like with just the sketch and to see if it kind of matches. And that sketch was based on photo reference that then I checked my stick sketch against like that. So all of these layers can be helpful to you as you continue. Just to make sure you're, you're getting the intention that you want. But most of your painting is going to be done in your shape painting and your refined painting. And you can break that up into to separate layers if you want. And there shouldn't be a huge difference in your painting, whether it's a gray background or a white background, because you're really trying to fill in all of those spaces. So as I continue to refine paint, working at a lower opacity, trying to address the areas that I haven't worked with so much before. that are still the same from my shape painting layer, right? So they're not really there yet. So I just need to cover everything, address everything somewhat. So there's a, an even level of finish. And almost always that has to do with establishing darkest darks. And then making sure I paint in the highlights. Trying to get color in there as well. Even though she's a gray dog. It's lots of color variation in the gray that I can play with. And remember to get top marks on our assignments, we're trying to engage the viewer with our project so that it's seen as art rather than just a technical exercise. That's where your experimentation, your use of color, your use of shapes and abstraction, all can be used even in just very straightforward digital painting. I want to make it yours. We don't want this to look like it was just done through a an artificial intelligence app where you I put a photo of my dog in and it gave me a digital painting. We get to make our own decisions about what's worth looking at. Now people that do concept art, color scripts, do a lot of digital painting in illustration, they'll make sure that they're always have exercises going because a big part of it is keeping loose and staying motivated through the process, which can be boring at times, a lot of work. especially when it's not subject matter that you get to choose. And the reason I like commercial art as a career so much is that it has a sense of play to it that you want to keep and try to retain in your professional practice. And 
for all of its uh, frustrations, digital painting is definitely playful. The way we can make these marks. If I want to draw the eye away from this ear a little bit and into the rest of my painting, I can leave it a little less finished intentionally as, as long as that's fully controlled, right? So a little bit more like this than the rest so that the eye really gets to the other parts of it. Okay, now... Now I want to address the uniform a little bit, which I haven't at all. So there's my refined painting of the face. I think that's about the finish I want, so I'll save that. And now I need to address the uniform. I'm going to go from the most detailed part first, probably these metals. Zoom in. I'm still, every layer is locked except for the refined paint layer. It's now saved and updated. I'm about 70% opacity, pretty high opacity for refined painting. I'm trying to go fast. But a lot, of, a lot of work here, a lot of ground to fill. So. Let's see, start by establishing some shadows. I sketch this in. I get to determine how detailed they're going to be. I'm trying not to use black, though it looks like black. I'm going to create a palette here for some of these. Layering these colors a little bit. Whoops. Hmm, why is it doing that? I'm trying to steal that color down there, but it doesn't like it. Remember, each time you layer colors, you're making it a little bit more complex. Though it takes a long time, it adds to the overall effect. A photo reference has its limitations, of course. It would be best to have the model in front of you. You can see it from the different angles. 
but I just want to kind of suggest with the photo reference, with my painting, the things that make sense. Edges that seem to matter the most. These metals just keep going, so many. button here. Use it to kind of figure out a workflow. And man-made things are harder. So we expect kind of regular edges. I like it in digital painting when you notice things you see things you didn't see otherwise because of your close inspection while painting like the red piping on the jacket kind of cool I think I'll have a good sense now when I zoom out if this is working or not. I need that cast shadow beneath all of them, underneath. That's really important. In oil painting, you paint uh, thick over lean, which usually means you have thin shadows kind of as an underpainting, and then you do lighter and lighter, thicker paint on top. And on watercolor, you do the opposite, where you work on a white paper and you stain from lightest to darkest. And then acrylic can be used either way, just based on the tone of the background. So digital painting, similarly, Based on whether you use the gray background or the white background, you can build it up as you see fit. I'm treating this a little bit more like watercolor at the moment, working lights first and then going progressively darker.
I really want those strong highlights to come through on these metals so that they look a little shiny.